I think it would have been impossible. I mean, what is striking is when the Queen allows Charles, and allow, I think, is absolutely mm. the right word, to read the speech from the throne in Parliament, mm. what is there? He doesn't sit in the throne of the sovereign. He sits in the consort's throne, and the crown is placed not, obviously not on his head, mm. because, because he's not king, but beside him. And in other words, the, the fact that he's substitute. But remember, traditionally, I mean, we've, we, we get so confused about these things. The speech from the throne was not given by the monarch. Victoria hardly ever gives it. It was normally given by the Lord Chancellor on behalf of the monarch. It's only the House of Windsor and before them, to an extent, Edward VII, who decide that the monarchy must be seen to do things yeah. so they give the speech from the throne. But it's not constitutionally necessary. Okay. But for the prime minister, it has to come from the monarch. And it's really very important that we see how literal it is. Yes. The, the actual use of the term kissing hands, it's a physical handover of power. Um, in the old days, when the leading officer of the crown was the Lord Chancellor, and the symbol of his office still is, is the great seal, this whacking great lump of, of, of gold from which the wax is cast, the, the seal was literally put into the hands of the king until it was warm. <laughs> Gosh. There was that sense of, or kept by him for 24 hours, and then it's handed back. Uh -huh. And there is that real sense of the physicality uh -huh. of the transfer of power. Can we, talking about the transfer of power now to, to Liz Truss, um, what has she been handed, David, do you think? What, what does the future hold? Is the European project over, for instance? I think she's been handed a series of catastrophes. Really? I think the best way that we should look at the situation we're in now, it is the equivalent of post-war. The combination of COVID, the f COVID was a phony war in which, thanks to lockdown and uh, 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 thanks to lockdown and to the whole business of, of uh, Rishi Sunak's uh, decisions over furlough, we incurred debts on the same scale as wartime. This is the fundamental reason we're having inflation. This is wartime debt. Wartime debt. How long we... did it take us to get out of wartime debt? It took us until about last year. Really? I mean, seriously. Yeah. Um, and what we're doing now is, of course, we've had, we've had a phony war. We had the, we had the phony war of, of, uh, of COVID, and we've now got the proxy war in the Ukraine. Mm. And the proxy war in the Ukraine, of course, is, is it were re-triggering this whole situation. So we've had effectively two wars in succession, and one of them still ongoing with outcomes that we don't know. David, it, sorry for interrupting course, you. You're talking, bringing something not very interesting and not very much in vision. It's from RAF North Holt, as you can see there. This is the plane which the Prime Minister is expected, whether it either is or isn't it, but that's going to fly to Aberdeen Airport very, very shortly. Anyway, back to other things. David, um, sorry. Well, isn't, isn't, it, isn't it interesting? We have a little flight of fancy. Mm. And, of course, if you listen to Boris Johnson's speech, it was this succession of flights of fancy. <laughs> And we have now a prime minister who has to do something, not just conjure words. Because Boris was brilliantly good at being a columnist, playing with words. And he assumed that if you made a little speech or made a visit or wore a funny uniform or you know, hung himself from a high wire, something would happen. That is not the way you govern. 